Hi, in this video, we are going to cover collections. Collection is a very important topic in any programming as here we can store the number of elements all together in a single collection. We have already covered something like that in arrays as well, but as we know, array provides you a static memory allocation which may consider the underflow and overflow by the time you are implementing. So here, while using the collections, we can find some classes which will provide you some specialized way to store and retrieve the data as the different classes may have the different structure, data structures to perform the data storage. And whatever class you will use here will give you the dynamic memory allocation means the memory consumption will be on the basis of the data which you are storing into a particular collection. But anytime when you will store a particular data will be of object type. That means you can assign any value and you can store the objects of any type in these collections. And to use the classes of collections, you will have to include the system.collections namespace which will give you some number of classes like array list, stack, queue, hash table and sorted list. So here in array list you will get something like array and you can anytime remove the elements from any particular location. Along with that you will get stack and queue which is a very famous data structure like first in, first out and last in, first out. We will see all that in the implementation. Along with that we have hash table and sorted list which will take care of a paired value means having key and value. Each value here will be having a unique key which using which you can search a particular value and you can remove the value as well. So let's see quickly how to implement all these things practically. So in order to implement the collections in .NET framework here First of all, I will have to use system.collections namespace which will provide us the required classes. As first of all, let's take an example where I will take the array list with the name list. And here, as soon as I will load this particular form, I will initialize this list and after that I can add the number of elements using the add method. Here, as you can see, like it is asking for the object type of members that means you can pass any values right here so here I will pass some strings like as here you can see I have added five elements one two three four five inside this list I'm making sure like I will not pass any other data type right here in this particular list but if you want you can definitely pass as these collections are not type safe so in order to retrieve that let's use for each loop or you can also go for for group in which you can first of all check the size of the array by the property called list dot count it will return you the number of element and using which you can iterate a for loop by the time you want in this program but here I will use this for each loop since all the elements are of object type object item in list so right here I can retrieve each element within the item now in order to get those elements in the common controls I will get a control called a list box which I have just added here alright and what I can do is list box one dot items dot add and here I can add the elements which will come in item okay item in this for each loop right so let's execute that and check whether I'm getting it or not so here you can clearly see like all the five elements has been added in this list box after that if you want to remove the elements from this list at the runtime you can call the remove remove at and remove range method if you will say remove it will simply remove a particular element which you will pass like if I pass three that particular element will be removed similarly if you will call remove at here you will have to pass the index of the particular element you which, which you want to remove like here I pass three elements so first element will be of 0th index then 1 2 
3 so this will be removed and uh, if I want to remove a number of elements altogether let me comment this so remove range in the first parameter you will have to pass the starting index let's say I pass 1 as a starting index and after that I want to remove three elements so what will happen this is 0 this is 1 starting from this it will remove three elements that is 2 3 4 will be removed and only 1 and 5 will be there in the list as you can see here similarly you can also sort these elements by calling the sort method right here as you can see now they are alphabetically sorted in ascending order if you want to sort them in the descending order you can just call the list dot reverse right after the sort so once it is sorted and you will reverse it it will be in descending order now these are some basic operations if I will discuss a bit uh, about the memory allocation of this array list so by default when you take an array list the capacity is 4 alright so let's take an example like I will comment these lines so as you can see here like count and capacity are the two variables which I have taken and here I am reading the couple of properties like count and capacity let me put them in the message box so as you can see I have only added two elements here so in count I will get two and in capacity as I said by default it is four so I will get that only so count is two and capacity is four but if you want you can change the capacity to any particular number like here by the time I call the constructor I pass 3 so now count is 2 and capacity becomes 3 but is it, it is a capacity not the size as soon as you will exceed the number of elements from the capacity like here I said 3 so as soon as you will add the fourth element in this list the capacity of this array list will be double let me get these messages after the list so as you can see first of all I have added these five numbers and let's see what is the result now so you see count is 5 and capacity is 6 as initially it was 3 and as soon as you added the fourth element it becomes twice that is 3 twice is 6 but if I will keep it default like 4 so the count is still 5 but capacity is 8 like it's again double of the 4 so this is how you can deal with the memories at runtime as there is nothing like overloading in case of these list but once you are done with all the operation what you can do is when you are sure like you are not going to add any other element or remove any other element from the list you can simply trim them using the trim to size method so again after that I will check the capacity is equal to list dot capacity so here you can see before trimming I am checking the capacity and even after trimming I am checking the capacity let's see what's the result here so initially you see the capacity is 8 count is 5 and after trimming capacity also becomes 5 so this is how you can work with the array list now here you can see a very simple implementation for stack as well as here first of all I have defined the instance of stack and here right here in the form load I have pushed some element putting some elements or adding some elements in the stack is called the push operation so that is what I did now when I will read it using the for each loop like object as here also all the elements will be added as the object so object item in stack and here inside again I will do this very same thing list box one dot items dot add so let's see the output now as for the principle of stack it is last in first out so I added it like one two three four five and it is like five four three two one here while working with stack it is very particular from the for the input and output so the sorting operation will not be possible here even though if you want to remove the elements you will not get so many options as you got in the array list here as we know pop is something which helps us to remove the element from the stack and the topmost elements means the last elements will get popped so if I will call a stack dot pop so 5 will be the topmost element from the stack and it will get removed as here you can see 4 3 2 1 are the remaining elements 
you can use the peak method as it will return an object I stored that in a variable called top and if you want you can read that like top dot to string so when I will execute that you see 4 is the topmost element as I popped out the 5 so 4 is the top and then again as you can see it is not removed and it is still in this list so it's all about your stack and a very similar implementation for the queue itself like here Q is a new element which I initialized right here in the form load when you add some element inside a queue it is called NQ and when you delete some element it is DQ so it is first in first out so I added it like 1 2 3 4 5 and when I will retrieve this you will see it is in the very same sequence as when you will DQ the first element in the queue will be removed and here the first element is the same which first you entered so when I will say Q dot DQ it will remove the first element as you can see there is no overloading so by default the first element which is 1 in this particular data structure is there so when I will execute it 1 is DQ'd and now the remaining ones are here now here the next is hash table as we have discussed in the description earlier that hash table will carry a key value pair so whenever I will start adding any element right here it is asking for a couple of values like object key object value so whenever you will enter the key the key must be unique duplicate key will not be allowed as all the searching here will be done on the basis of the key itself so here let's say I'll write key 1 and then its value and similarly I will add some more elements so I have added five elements here with the different keys and values as you see values are duplicate here but it will not be an issue but you see keys are unique every time I added a new record now to retrieve this basically whenever I'll check the structure of this single value this is something what we call a key value pair means this is not a single value they are the couple of values and here in this particular case we will call it dictionary entry so when I will use a for each loop here I will call it a dictionary entry item in HT that is the hash table and now inside this you see if I'll say item dot so you will get key and value both separately alright because item is of type dictionary entry which will take care of all these paired values so firstly I will say key then a separator colon and then again the value so when I will execute this you see all the values have been printed right here in order to remove a particular value you can pass that particular key like here if I'll say key1 alright in the very same way very same case I'll have to write so if I will execute it again you will not find key1 again in this list similarly if you want to search the element from this hash table you can call this contains method which will return a boolean and it will ask for a particular key whether that particular key is there or not as I said this key is going to help us whenever I will want to search a particular element so using these methods you can simply start working with these hash table also and all these same features and functionalities you will get in sorted list as well as that of the hash table because it also gives you the key value pair the only difference is here all the data will be sorted on the basis of these key so when I will execute that you see all the data is in the sorted order right here so this is how you can start working with these collections